I'm Scott Al Miller. This is my vlog of daily life living in Latin America. And today we're going to do something a little bit different because I am exhausted. I've been hiking. I've done hours of filming today for you guys. I'm running late on the show and I wanted to get it out and make it possible to get an episode done in a reasonable amount of time. And I decided to do something a little bit different because you guys never actually see me make the show. And I just had an opportunity to do that. So why not? So I'm in a hotel room. I have a mirror that kind of actually works. I have no idea what this light is going to look like. It's going to be awful, I can tell. But we're going to give it a try. And we're going to get to some thoughts about being a long-term, very serious traveler and living abroad and how your thought processes about places you go change over time because of that. We're going to get to that right after the bump. So this is definitely a very strange setup for the camera. So give me your feedback as to what you think. Is this just, I don't know why I would ever do this again, but I wanted to give it a try and I was in a big hurry today. Uh, as many of you know, I've been running behind on the episodes. I just have a lot going on. We're gonna be catching up in about a week or so and hopefully pretty soon getting back to the live shows. I haven't been able to do those for the last several weeks and I really miss them. They're a lot of fun to do. So we hope to get back to that all part of the the fun adventure that is what I do. And recently I've been getting just a little bit, I don't say burned out, but it's been very hard to keep up with the show. There's been so much going on and I have been doing a lot of filming. There's a lot of stuff you haven't seen yet. And, and I'm, I'm hoping to release a bunch of stuff and I've got a whole bunch of stuff edit, like I just need to edit. It's just been very busy, but not, it's not that it's so hard to make the show. It's that I'm trying to make a lot of stuff and make stuff for the future and like just trying to get a lot of good material. And so a couple of episodes have really fallen that I've been like scrambling to get them out. So I apologize that I'm not quite able to keep to the standard schedule. And so today I wanted to do something that was pretty simple and get one out pretty quickly uh, without a lot of editing. And so this I decided was a way that maybe we give that a try, at least do something different. And I thought it might be kind of cool for you guys to see what I see when I'm recording, because this is what my everyday most is, right? I don't always use the GoPro, but almost always. And this is kind of what it looks like. I use this Ulanzi tripod and I can either put it in handheld mode, handheld mode or tripod mode. Uh, and then the GoPro attaches to this. And this is the GoPro 11, but I use the 9, 11 and 12. Uh, and you can see what data I've got on there, the settings that I'd like, this is what I'm seeing as we're recording uh, all the time, right? So this is just what I'm looking at. And I, I, yeah, I assume that it's at least a little bit interesting for those who watch my show all, all the time. And for everyone else, it looks really stupid, but it's something different. So why not break it up? We do the show every day, so we need some variety. So today's topic, I wanna to talk about how your view on travel and places that you go changes over time, both for travelers and for relocators, for expats, for people who are living abroad. And this could, digital nomads just kind of fall in the middle so they can extrapolate from those two. But something that I found when I, and this is probably pretty obvious, but people don't think about it a lot. And I think it's worth mentioning because for travelers, it's good to know. And for if you're an expat, you're looking to be an expat, it has some important connotations. That play into lots of things that we talk about all the time, but they're just things that maybe don't bubble up until you've really sat and thought about it and why would you? So as a traveler, when I started traveling heavily, I did a lot of, well, I did a lot of travel, but it was very domestic travel. So it didn't have the same kind of uh, push the way that foreign travel did. But because I started traveling when I was very young, my parents liked to travel. Well, I did a lot of travel as uh, throughout my childhood. The idea of how to travel, how to use hotels, how to, that stuff was obvious it was it was built into who i was and my kids will be the same way the idea that you go to a town get a hotel like all those just processes of basic travel are going to be so obvious to them that it won't occur to them that, that a lot of people don't know how to do that or, or it feels foreign or it feels scary but for a lot of people they barely ever, ever travel as a child and maybe as an adult they don't really travel either and so the idea of traveling even to another city within their own country will just say you're in canada you live in toronto you want to go visit bc that could be scary. How do you get there? Well, I don't know how to use an airport or I've never used a train before or I don't know how to buy the tickets and well, how do I arrange the hotel? What do I do? And none of those things should seem overwhelming, but when you put them all together, it can make travel seem a little bit nerve wracking because there's just a bunch of things that you're not quite sure what to do. And so you spend a bunch of your day 
fumbling, perhaps, or at least worrying. Maybe you get there and you're like, oh, this is all very straightforward and easy. Why was I worried? Of course, that's the, the expected thing. But a lot of people never drive outside their cities. Maybe it's, I don't know how to rent a car. I don't know what I need to know. I don't know how to exchange money. I don't know how to use foreign ATMs. I'm used to the ones in my city. There's just so many little things that if you travel all the time, you never think about them. They're just part of everyday life. And uh, for example, when I was a working, working adult at 18, 19, I started traveling heavily just within the United States, mostly. But I would be in a different city and potentially a different state day to day in many cases. And so the things that you needed to know for traveling from state to state, for uh, different driving laws, for different uh, rest stops, for different hotels, for just all these little tiny things became second nature. So I can travel anywhere in the U.S. without thinking about it at all. It doesn't, wouldn't even occur to me that there was something to think about. But if you're a new traveler, those things can be scary and there, there can be travel skills that you have yet to to uh, experience and, and uh, uh, adapt. So it's uh, when we then take that international, we then start to realize, more people start to realize that you're going to have those scary things, you're going to have these barriers and when you first travel anywhere, right? You, you tend to want travel to be a certain way. You want it to be very simple. You want things to be handled. You want to stay in your hotel room and, and not venture out. You, you want less adventure and more sightseeing. You want uh, things to be laid out for you. If you're traveling for work, that's one thing. But if you're traveling to see a new place, it's your first time going to, well, uh, Vancouver, for example, you may get there and say, well, I want a guidebook that's going to lay out here are the sites you want to see, which museums are actually really good, which restaurants are really worth going to, which are the places that the locals would go to if they were showing you around and so forth. They're, they're, you want that list because, well, how do you know where to go? And you've never thought about your own city in that way to apply what you know about wherever you grew up to wherever you're going to. And maybe you didn't grow up in a city. Maybe you're like me, you grew up on a farm and every time you're in a city, that feels like travel. I mean, that's actually a real thing. I grew up on a farm that was about 45 minutes outside of Rochester, New York. Now, that doesn't make Rochester a real foreign place, but going to the city was actually a rare enough occurrence that while it's my home city and I think nothing of going there, when I was a kid, the number of times I went into Rochester or Buffalo, which was only a few minutes farther away, was little enough that it was always an event to go there. Not a big deal, not something I had to like beg my parents to do, not something they were afraid to do. My dad worked in the city, went there every day, but it was a pain to drive up there. You didn't do it just for nothing. When we went to the mall, we went to the outskirts of the city. We never went downtown, except for when I was very little and there weren't malls in the outskirts yet. But once that happened, we never went downtown. I remember downtown from my very young childhood being a specialty place you went for Christmas shopping. And you know, it was a major, like, effort to get down there and oh yes if we're gonna go see uh, the symphony orchestra we would go downtown and be like yes we're getting dressed up we're, we're driving in we're picking a restaurant downtown and and there's some sites to see and it was like all oh, high rises and like it was just a cool experience so it felt like travel every time we went even into my own city and to some degree every time we went to villages that were farther than the ones we normally went to and most people experience this right your village or set of villages that you go to all the time. For me, that was places like Perry, Avon, Geneseo, Leroy, Batavia, New York. These were my home villages. If I went much farther than those, if I was going out to Caledonia or uh, uh, Canandaigua, someplace like that, it would feel like a little bit of a mini vacation. There was something new to see, new Main Street to go visit, new stores, new restaurants, even though they were basically all the same. It wasn't very far away, but we all experience these things. And the farther you go, the more they feel like something new and exciting and you aren't sure where to go. But we generally don't put into perspective that we're doing travel in those cases, especially because most of those cases, you're not getting a hotel, you're not spending the night. You're just experiencing a place and driving home. It's only 30 minutes away, 45 minutes away, two hours away. But when you start going a little bit farther, you start being like, ooh, I'm far from home. I can't just go home. I have to be able to rely on the place that I am. And so when you go out to Vancouver for the first time, you have all these, well, there's just things you need to know as you do that. And then so you want it handed to you in most cases. I mean, everybody's, there's always an exception, but most people lean really heavily towards, I just want, I want to be told what to see. I want to know, okay, go to the botanical gardens, go there at this time, go do this, go do that. If you go to Disney World, 
you're going to have the same kind of experience. You look at the, uh, if, if you know what you're doing, right, you're going to go look and see the people who travel there all the time. And they're going to tell you which rides to do in which order. Where do you go right when the, the place opens in the morning? Uh, which lines are worth standing in? Which restaurants are worth eating at? Because you can't eat at them all. You have limited time. you got to make your time count. And that's a little bit less scary because it's Disney World. But the idea is the same, that you need to rely on people who are there all the time to tell you what the current status of things is. And, and when you're traveling to a new city, you have this, okay, you need all this stuff. As you begin to become an experienced traveler, which may happen to you when you're five years old, it may happen to you when you're 50, and finally decide it's time to get out and start trying to travel, you're probably going to find pretty quickly that the things you liked when you were a new traveler, tour guides and, and buses that take you around and uh, taxis that are set up by the airport and just everything handed to you and, and guided to you and, and you're going to popular restaurants that are listed somewhere uh, and, and tourist attractions are generally going to start to fall away. Not always, but for most people, you're gonna love those things when you first travel and as you travel more, you will like them less and less. Some things are an exception such as art museums, if you loved an art museum when it was on your schedule, you're probably going to love art museums when it's later and you're an experienced traveler because it's actually a thing you really want to see. If you love architecture, you're always going to love architecture. If you like taking river cruises, you'll probably always like taking river cruises. But at some point, amusement parks and, and going to exactly the things that the restaurants that everyone else goes to are going to stop being interesting and going to places that you find yourself and going to places that locals go to that they don't tell foreigners about, places that locals would eat at that they don't think foreigners or in foreigners could be people from another city or from another country uh, are going to like or whatever. You start really wanting to experience the culture and do things that locals want to do every day rather than things that tourists want to do every day. And so not only do, do the ways that you want to travel tend to change, but quite often the places that you want to uh, travel are going to change. And an example of that is, I'll use just one of the most obvious ones ever, is Venice, Italy. Venice is a city that is really well known for uh, being a, basically a tourist trap. Very few people still live there. It does have some amazing architecture. It's got some great museums, art, statues. Uh, there are some cool restaurants, but they're very expensive and there really are very few locals to eat at them. It's almost all for tourists. The place empties out at night and during the day you can barely move it at night. It's mostly empty because there's really nowhere to stay that's affordable. So Venice is this perfect example of a place where new tourists, people who are like just beginning to get the travel bug and they want to try out travel, they're like, well, everyone talks about Venice. This is a place you go. And then they go and it's you're just in crowds and you're doing the same thing as everyone else and it doesn't feel very authentic, but it's easy as a tourist. You're kind of guided through. And Disney World is a perfect experience for the first time traveler, right? You have absolutely no idea what to do. Disney World will tell you where to stay, where to go, what to do. Everything's just handed to you, right? You can't go wrong. You can't get lost. You can't have disaster unless you don't follow their plan. And so these kinds of places kind of spoon feed you travel. But once you become a more seasoned traveler, places like Disney World start feeling packaged like it's plastic and Venice starts feeling unauthentic and you start realizing, well, why would I want to go there? Why would I pay lots to eat at places that are designed for tourists? I could fake that at home. I could go to whatever city you live in. We'll make something for you just like those restaurants in Venice. They're not going to offer something special. It's all artificial. But if you went to Italy, Italy, right? If you went to Bologna, you went to Piemonte, you went to Milan, you went to one of these places and go with the locals and get off the tourist path. All those places have their tourist beats, but start exploring side streets, look for real neighborhoods, go away from the, the attractions and start looking for places where real people live and finding restaurants that real people eat at and start discovering what life is like there. You have a completely different experience and it's generally cheaper, more exciting, more vibrant, more interesting, and you lean more and more towards that as you become a seasoned traveler. I turned the camera around because I found that to be just a bit much. Okay, so the same thing is going to apply. I think when I say this, as I say this, those of you who have traveled at all 
are going to say, oh, yeah, I kind of get that experience. I understand that. Even if it doesn't happen to you, even if you still like Venice and Disney World, if you really like the, the tour book attractions, that's fine if that's the things that you like. But you can see where people generally make this change, why it changes for a lot of people. The same thing tends to happen when you relocate, when you become an expat. When you first look at becoming an expat, or when you first become an expat, there's a very high tendency to want to be around other expats. You want to be in major cities or in major uh, tourist destinations, maybe not the biggest tourist destinations, maybe not Disney World or Venice, but you're going to lean in Nicaragua, for example. We use uh, San Juan del Sur or Granada. This is where most people kind of get their tourism feet wet when coming to Nicaragua. And so when expats first look at moving there, they tend to think of those places as well. That's how they picture Nicaragua. And when they get there, like we did when we first moved to Nicaragua, we went to Granada. And it was a great introduction to living there. Luckily, we rented, so that was not a big deal. And over a very quick amount of time, we said, okay, this is great. We got our feet wet. We know what's going on in Nicaragua. We know how to do things in Nicaragua. Like We have that feel for things. Now we're equipped to go look at other cities and make a decision about places we want to be. And it wasn't something that we were able to do overnight. It took us a period of years. We did a lot of time living in Nicaragua and, and we next said, okay, we're gonna move to a beach that's a lot less touristy. So we moved from downtown Granada in the tourist zone out to a beach that does have a lot of tourists, but is not a super touristy beach. It's not the main one, San Juan del Sur. Uh, and after a year there, we said, okay, that was fun. That was a step better for us, but we're still feeling too touristy. We're fe feeling around, it's just a different feel, right? You're, you're not getting as authentic, even though it's pretty authentic there. You're still surrounded by both expats, which is fine, and that could be what you want long term, but it, it makes it very easy. It makes it very uh, separate and apart from normal Nicaraguan life. And, uh, and the longer you live there, the more likely anywhere, right? You, the more likely you are to want to become a part of the place more in, more in depth and less uh, working to isolate yourself from the country. And when you're around a bunch of expats, it becomes natural that you're going to gravitate towards each other and isolate accidentally in most cases, simply because you speak the same language, you have shared experiences, both before you became an expat and be once you're an expat, there's a lot of shared experiences. And it's like, well, this is what life is like for us as expats. And you know, uh, locals don't have to go to uh, get their visas extended. They know nothing about that process and expats can bond over that process. And so you, you naturally have that. Plus you have lots of just tourists, people passing through. And when you're new to being an expat, when you're new to tourism, you want to be around other tourists because there's always someone you can talk to, always someone who has the same challenges or problems or needs as you. Hey, where did you find bottled water? Hey, where did you find there was a good restaurant that wasn't too local because I'm not sure I can handle it. Or we got a picky eater in the family and we just need to find chicken fingers. They're all like, oh yeah, no, us too. Here's what you do, here's where you go these people speak English, right? You, you want to be around people like you, new to a place, speak your language and so forth, because they're going to help you feel comfortable in that other people who are doing the same experience things that you're doing can find the things, the, the, the services, the supplies, the transport, whatever that they need, and you can get that information from them. And you see this all the time. Man, I, do you have a recommendation of a taxi I can use? I need to go to the airport, right? What do all the, all the tourists in, in the beach have in common? They all have to get to the airport. They all have to get there from the airport, right? They have these recurring needs. And so that becomes a natural thing. And expats do the same thing. Once you get comfortable and you don't need the support of the expats, and you certainly don't need the support of the tourist anymore, there's a really high likelihood that you're going to keep evolving in your expat lifestyle. And you're going to start saying, well, I don't necessarily want to be around people who are nonstop needing those things as well, because it goes both ways. Not only do you no longer rely on them, but you become someone that more and more people rely on. It becomes part of everyday life. And at some point after years of it, you really start to notice that you spend an inordinate amount of time explaining the same things again, telling that, you know, oh, here's the taxi to use. Oh, here's the restaurant I recommend. Oh, here's the, and it's on and on. And it never changes, but the people you talk to are often new day to day, maybe every day or every week, but it's constantly new people in the conversations. And this is unfortunate, but if you're around people who are relatively new to travel, the conversations tend to get a little bit repetitive. And so both the isolation of expat life and the repetitive nature of tourism life tend to make 
expats who've lived in a place for a while start to want to look further afield, whether it's moving slightly farther away from the beach, getting farther away from the touristy center of the city, not living near the, the main tourist restaurant areas or the attractions, or maybe it's moving into the country or moving into a city that doesn't have a lot of tourists. There's a lot of different ways that this can play out. And for some people, they just love the location that they're in, but their feelings about it, the way that they want to interact with it tend to change. And of course, there's some people for whom it never changes, but they are definitely the exception, not the rule. The majority of people, once they put in a lot of time, start having a completely different lifestyle over, over a period of time. And I say all this for two reasons. There's two groups of people here, right? Travelers and expats, or potential travelers and potential expats. And I say both these things because for travelers, the takeaway, the thing that you should learn from this is that, yes, travel can, and, it's, and at every level, right? It's your first time traveling, your first time traveling internationally, your first time going to a country that doesn't speak your language, your first time going really far away, first time going to, you know, a desert, whatever. At the beginning of travel, any new travel has a tendency to feel pretty scary. And we may not be like, oh, I'm scared, but like there, there's a there's an emotional barrier to it. And in realizing that it's just emotional and most all travel is quite simple, no matter how, you know, uh, exotic it feels like, it's probably really simple. It's not something that you should be worried about. Just do it. You'll probably be just fine. And there are a lot of safeguards. Do a little bit of planning, think a little bit, but in general, it's very, very simple. But Beware when you first travel, yes, rely on the guidebooks, rely on a lot of hand holding, but be ready that as you travel, that's going to change pretty quickly, most likely. And once you've done a little bit of travel, you're like, oh, I wanna do a lot more things of my own. I wanna be a lot more flexible. And yes, the first time you go to some really far away place, you might be like, oh, I'm gonna back off a little bit, go a little bit more to the travel guide. And then even more quickly, okay, I'm good. I'm gonna do this on my own now. I don't need the hand holding like I had. And just as part of your travel planning, start thinking about that, that as you progress through your travel uh, experiences, you will likely evolve in this way and just being prepared for it makes it a little bit easier for you to adapt more quickly and realize the things that are most likely going to make you happier as a traveler and make you want to get out and travel more. As an expat, even more important because travelers can adapt pretty quickly because they just can, right? But it is worth noting for travelers that often travelers will start by going to certain locations. And instead of branching out and going to new locations, they'll keep going to the same locations that they know. This can cause some problems for them. And just as an example, maybe you live in the United States and you decide to take a vacation in Aruba. Well, the first time you do it, it's exotic and exciting. There's new restaurants, there's new places to go, and maybe you have a really good time there and you make some great memories. So you want to go back and that's totally valid. And that's great, it's wonderful to establish places that you wanna go back to and, and have it be part of your travel repertoire that you just recur. But it's also important to note that that excitement, though, things that made you happy that first time won't be the same the second time. The next time they're going to be nostalgic, so they may be good in a new way, but they're not going to be new and exotic again. Now it's going to be familiar. And if that's all you do for travel, it starts to kind of not be travel anymore. It starts to be just going to your beach house or whatever. So that behavior is something that I think people should look for because so many people do that. They find one place and it's kind of random. I tried this place. It was in an ad somewhere. I liked it. So I didn't go out and explore all these other places. But chances are wherever you go, there's going to be somewhere else you like more just because you haven't tried that many places. So and that excitement of exploring that, that new restaurant, that new neighborhood, the new music, the new band, the new beach, the new whatever is all going to be something you can experience and new people, of course. Course, and and don't limit yourself or you may be reducing your personal pleasure in travel by making it not so much travel anymore but for some people that is always going to be what they want and i certainly know people we have family members who the only place they ever want to go to is disney world they go every year and the reason is because they one time they went they don't really like the adventure aspects of traveling to a new place that what they like is the food and the Disney-esque stuff and they are comfortable because they've done it over and over again so it's no longer exotic and that's exactly what they wanted to do is get rid of that exploration aspect and that's valid, that's how some people are so maybe that's you and that's fine. But if it's not, 
beware, a lot of people fall into that trap that it's like, well, but this is familiar. I've gotten over the emotional barrier of Aruba, so I don't branch out and go to the Bahamas because that so I don't know the Bahamas, right? Well, isn't that the fun? Maybe the reason to go to the Bahamas instead of Aruba is because you don't know it. It's just, just a thought, something to really contemplate before you only get so many travel experiences. Opportunities in your lifetime, spending them all in one place does have value, but at the cost of not being able to go to a lot of other places. Now for expats, much more importantly, when you move to a place like we did, you start and almost always evolve heavily. And so when you make the decisions, and the, again, it doesn't apply to everyone, and I talk to people who are really certain that they've thought about their long-term uh, lifestyle changes and desires, and they're really confident that the places that they're looking at, the things that they want to do, are going to be absolutely concrete. They don't have to worry about ever having changing desires over their lifetimes, and maybe they are correct. I don't know many people for whom that would be correct if they said that, but it is for some people. So it's something that maybe if you have a high degree of confidence that you know yourself extremely well, maybe you've traveled so many other places that, okay, you, you've gotten over those things in, in other ways, okay, but be aware for the vast majority of people, when you first move to a new country, to a new location, to a new zone, you're going to want levels of comfort and you're going to gravitate towards things that are probably not what you're going to want long term. You are going to change. And so this means two things. One, it's fine to start in more comfortable places. I mean, it's fine to start somewhere else too. It's fine to start anywhere. That's not the point, but it's completely okay to stop and say, okay, I want to go to someplace that's going to hold my hand. I want to be in a city center, tourist zone, lots of people speak English, lots of other expats, some tourists around. That's fine. But it's also important that when you do that to say, but I bet I'm not going to want to do this forever. I bet I'm going to want to change maybe once, maybe multiple times as I grow in my expatidry. And as I mature, I may want different things, maybe in months, maybe in years, and of course, maybe never. But if you plan for that or are aware of this process that most people go through, it helps to realize a lot of the things that we say, why I say, you know, visit places first, make sure you visit a lot, get a really good scope before you move, make sure you rent for a long time, make sure even when you're ready to be for years, consider that renting and being flexible is still important because you may evolve and have reasons that you want to move in the future. Now, of course, life can change and you may want to move for other reasons, but just from your growth, in your lifestyle as an expat, there's every possibility that you're gonna find that you're gonna to wanna to move on to a new place. Something driving you to be an expat. And while it's probably not completely your desire for adventure, that is probably an aspect to it. All the people who want to travel to some degree have some amount of desire for adventure. Some people it's a lot, some people it's a little. Some people want to travel for reasons other than adventure and the adventure is just an added little bit. If you find the adventure abhorrent, you probably just avoid travel. And if you're going to become an expat or you're gonna consider it strongly, you probably have a very strong sense of adventure being something that you want, that you seek. And if you really hate adventure, you're probably not watching this channel. You're probably not considering whether or not you wanna be an expat. So as a almost guaranteed adventurous person watching this channel, considering travel or expatidry or digital nomadry, you probably want to account for the fact that you will need to kind of up the game. You're gonna to wanna to go to more exotic locations. You're gonna to wanna to get a little bit harder to, to do things. You're gonna to want to be a little bit more authentic, a little bit more local. Uh, whatever it is, you're probably going to want to be less of a tourist and more of a local. You'll never be a full local, right? You're always gonna be a little bit of a tourist no matter how much time you put in. It's just the nature of things, but you're going to slide that scale heavily towards local over time in most cases. And as you do that, places and decisions and lifestyle and lots of things that you may think are very solid decisions early on uh, in your life may change. And of course, as we get older, other things change as well. Oh, when I was young, I wanted a big house with lots of space. And as I get older, I want to downsize and just be easy. Like we change in that way too. And that's normal, but that's an additional aspect. And of course, as you get older, you may move back towards touristy areas. You may want more familiarity. That's normal as uh, we approach retirement years. 
having things be simpler and more access to resources. So all those things are, are important to consider that especially just in life in general, we often want to move a number of times to address some of those things, but those are normally in smaller areas. As an expat, you often want to put a lot more dynamic changes in there simply because you're more adventurous and there's more dynamic possibilities in the decisions that you make. So it was just some thoughts that I had as I uh, have done a bit of research into travel and talking to people about different locations and things and realizing how much some locations that are so popular with people who have not traveled or are repetitive travelers constantly going back to the same place are just terrible for people who are experienced travelers who are like, why would anyone want to come to this place? But people who don't branch out, don't go to lots of different places are like, what do you mean? This is the best place ever. And, and that incredible dichotomy of view on that travel experience is so dramatic. And it's like, oh, why is it like that? That there's an entire group of people who are all consistently like, well, this is not good travel. And this other group that's like, this is the best travel. And you're like, why? Why is it so? And, and I think this is the aspect of it, right? The experience of having gone lots of places. The people who constantly either just go to the, it's their first place, they need everything. Okay, that's great. But if you do that and then come back to that same place over and over again, you're going to have that, well, now it's familiar and you take that adventure, you take that travel out of it. And if you're not an adventurous person, if you want that familiarity, then that's exactly what you're going to want. So I mean, nothing wrong with that, right? But that's, uh, you need to know that about yourself when making these life decisions, because it's going to help you make better life decisions. Uh, but that had come up in a lot of discussions I had this week, and I thought I would share. That was a good opportunity to have a topic for the day. I hope you enjoy your Saturday. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, post on social media, tell your friends about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And to help promote the show, four videos are going to pop up on the screen. Just click one of them. It would mean so much to all of us. It tells the algorithm that the show is important to you.